Welcome to our weekly Forex forecast, and this is for trading uh, for the week of July 19th to the 23rd, 2021. Just a quick disclaimer here before we get started. This is for educational uh, purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. As usual, we'll start off by taking a look at our calendar here. So this weekend, we do have OPEC meetings. Um, OPEC meetings are important for, for the price of oil and um, in turn for Canadian dollar. And the reason for this is because of the production quotas. If they change the production quotas, they have been uh, managing the production quotas quite uh, tightly. And if they loosen the production quotas and they give permission to um, different countries to produce more oil, that would be negative for the price of the oil. So any kind of comments coming out in regards to that will be important here for the OPEC meetings. And then we also have um, on Monday, we have monetary policy meeting minutes here for Australia. Uh, so currently we have seen the central banks are changing or at least talking about changing the monetary policy. Uh, we have had a fairly loose monetary policy over the last year and a half since COVID started. And now that uh, things are getting back to normal, things are opening up, uh, the focus has been on the monetary policy and the central banks. At this point, many of the central banks, including Reserve Bank of New Zealand, Bank of Canada, Bank of England, some of these banks have talked about tightening the monetary policy. Fed has talked about it, but they've kind of gone back and forth. So in, on one hand, they've been saying they will tighten the monetary policy um, and they've provided some sort of a loose forward guidance in regards to when the interest rates may potentially go up. But on the other hand, we heard from Powell uh, last week and he basically said that they're going to continue uh, supporting the markets with the loose monetary policy. So start continue to pump money into the economy uh, through the purchase of bonds um, and other securities. So it's back and forth. Um, for here, Reserve Bank of Australia, the focus will be to see what their um, what their comments are. Are they looking um, to tighten the monetary policy? Do they talk about it? If they talk about tightening the monetary policy, whether that's through raising rates or um, cutting back on the uh, amount of money they're putting into the markets, all of that will be uh, positive for Australian dollars. So we'll keep that in mind. Uh, into Tuesday here, we do have some um, housing numbers from the US, but nothing big except for this monetary policy meeting minutes. Uh, but this will not be as important because we had Bank of Canada, sorry, Bank of Japan last week. Um, Wednesday, again, not a ton of important stuff here. Um, we have crude oil inventories, so that will make a difference. Thursday, monetary policy statement from ECB. So ECB so far has not indicated that they are in any sort of a hurry to change the monetary policy. So at this point, if they reiterate that they're going to continue providing support to the market like Fed was doing, uh, that would be negative for, for the euro. But if they switch their language um, even somewhat, then that could turn into a positive thing for Euro. So uh, something to keep an eye on here. And when we have a bank statement come out, so keep in mind, first there will be, uh, there will be market movement from the monetary policy statement and then the press conference. With the press conference, we can see uh, movement because of the questions that will get asked. Uh, and going into Friday here, Friday is a busy day. We have PMI numbers from the Eurozone, from uh, from Pound, as well as the US. So PMI, uh, this is Purchasing Managers Index, which is a leading indicator for retail sales. If the purchasing managers are buying stuff, which means they have confidence that they will be able to sell their products, um, which indicates that um, the economy is likely to do better. So this is... Uh, uh, any of the positive numbers here will have a positive impact on the currencies as well. All right, so that's it in terms of our news. Now, now let's go on to the charts here. We'll start off with euro dollar. So with the euro, um, as we can see, price has not really done a whole lot. This week, um, it did go into support at 1.1830, but hasn't done much beyond that. 
Now with this one here, neutral bias at the moment, it's been trading sideways here for the last few weeks. But as we can see, three times price has tested the support, has failed, so we are likely to, we may see a retest, uh, but if it doesn't go through, we are likely to go back towards the top of the range. So watch out this uh, for the support at 1.1830. Uh, rejection of this is likely to move the price higher towards 1.1940. Having said that, though, if it does manage to break, there is this room to the downside, and we are likely to see a continuation, and then even we could see it potentially go lower here. So we'll have to watch out uh, for the support. So right now, neutral bias, and again, if it holds above 1830, we're looking for a move back towards 1.1940. Um, so we'll keep an eye on this in our daily uh, daily call. So neutral bias for euro dollar. A pound dollar, on the other hand, this one is still trading in a range, but this was a little bit more negative last week compared to euro. So euro held its own, but pound has dropped here. It's um, again, we do have to pay attention to the support because last couple of times price was not able to get through. And uh, next target here is 1.3650 uh, or 1.3660. And below that, we are looking at 1.3520. So bearish bias here for pound. The concern will be right into the support. So these two support levels at 1.3740 and 1.3650, those two we have to watch out for. So bias is bearish here for pound dollar. Aussie dollar here, this one moved lower, but again, it didn't really, it failed to make any sort of progress. Um, and this is similar setup that we saw in Euro as well. Price wasn't able to get through the support. So now we are looking for move back up into the top of the range potentially. And this could become a range bound uh, move here again. So same thing, if it does for some reason manage to go through, then there's a lot of room to the downside. We could see a continuation of this downward uh, move here. However, if it fails to go through 0 0.7450, uh, then we are back into. So right now, more likely scenario is uh, going back into the range, but there is that chance that it can break through the support. But neutral bias for this one, I'm looking for a range bound move here. New Zealand dollar, this one as well, um, as we can see, price has just been trading sideways here. It came into the support and it hasn't been able to make it through. With this as well, looking for a move potentially back into the range. So this is, again, range bound for a number of weeks here. Price has been stuck between uh, 0 0.7100 and 0 0.6920. So I'm expecting it to continue with that. Dollar CAD here. Dollar CAD is, has gone both in both directions. But similar um, stuff that we saw to other dollar crosses, price did go up, but we are back again into the range. So in this case as well, looking for price to essentially come back into the range. So this is the range it's been trading in between 1.2520 to 1.2280. It's been trading sideways here. It rejected the, um, the high here or rejected the resistance at 1.2520, did go and test the high, but failed. So now we are back into the range for this one here as well. So neutral for dollar cap, looking for a move towards 1.2280. Uh, Euro pound here, this one looks more bearish. Price did retest the bottom of this range that it had been trading in for a number of weeks, and now it held below, which means we are likely to see a further move to the downside here. Um, so bias is to the downside, 0 0.8500, and then 0 0.8470 are the next two levels to watch. Uh, Euro pound here, not much in terms of the week here. Um, prices into support. We did have a nice um, run to the downside, but it's into support here. Price has struggled with this level before, and now we are. So if it doesn't go through, I'm looking for retest of the bottom, basically the bottom of this candle. If it doesn't go through, we are back into the range again. So neutral to bearish bias here for Euro. Uh, Euro Swiss franc. If it does go through though, 
then we have this next level to target 1.0740. But until then, the support at 1.0850 will be important because this is where it could go uh, back and become range bound. This one as well, we had a nice strong bearish candle close, but then became range bound. So watch out for that. Pound Swiss franc here. Pound Swiss franc is looking neutral at this point as well. As we can see, it's been trading in a range for a number of weeks now, and it's still stuck in a range. So at this point, bias is neutral, looking for a range bound move basically. So between 1.2820 and 1.2585. So bearish, uh, sorry, neutral bias for pound Swiss franc. Dollar Swiss franc, this one looks a little bearish. It is into support, so watch out here. Um, now, once the, once the support gives way though, we have this nice candle, this nice bullish candle that will get filled here, just like this one did. Um, so that's what we are looking for. But for that to happen, it has to be able to go through 0 0.9130. So we'll watch out for this, but bias is bearish here for dollar Swiss franc. And in terms of our targets here, we are looking at the first target is 0 0.9050 and then 0 0.8930. So bearish bias for dollar Swiss franc. Pound yen, this one looks bearish. We have a nice drop. Uh, keep in mind, it's coming into support at 150.80, but overall bias still remains to the downside here. Uh, watch out for a bit of a pullback before it continues lower. So something like that. Uh, 150.80 is the first target and second target is 148.80. So bearish bias for pound yen. Uh, Euro yen, this has been not doing a whole lot. Um, as we can see, price uh, came into the support then bounced off, but now it's just been stuck um, sideways here. So bias is neutral. This one could become range bound or we may see a retest of 131.20 and then a drop from there. So we'll have to keep an eye on this one in the um, in our daily right now, not a clear direction. Overall bias here still remains to the downside. So we'll watch out for this type of a move. Uh, see if it rejects or holds below 131.25, then we will look for a continuation lower. Otherwise we back into basically the top. So this one overall has also been trading in a bit of a range. So this is the range it's been trading in and we could um, we could see it become range bound. Uh, so we'll keep an eye here, see how it reacts to the support. If it doesn't break through, we're looking for price to go uh, towards the top there. So neutral uh, bias here for Euro Yen. Dollar Yen, Dollar Yen has been trading in a bit of a sideways channel here. As we can see, price has been going in a bit of a channel, my top channel. It's not very good, but let's draw this again. Here we go. So it's been trading in a bit of a channel here, uh, a bit of a move higher, um, not very not very strong at this point though. Uh, however, it could go higher. So basically for this one as well, just looking for a range bound move here. So if we were to get rid of that sideways channel, just looking at the last few weeks of candles, it's been stuck between 109.60 and 111.20. So this is where I'm expecting the price to stay. If it gets um, if it gets rejected currently where it is, then it could move lower. But for now, just looking for a range bound move here between 111.20 and then 109.60. Aussie yen here. Um, Aussie yen did not do a whole lot. As we can see, price um, is still trading sideways. It hasn't been able to go through the support uh, below 82. So looking for a move back towards the top of the range here as well. So potentially something like this, basically. So neutral bias here. Um, neutral bias here for Aussie yen as well, looking for a move towards 84.20. But keep in mind, there is the support resistance right into 83, and this is where it could fail as well. So um, some of these not very clear at this point, we'll have to follow uh, these on the daily, we'll, we'll watch out for that. So this is the concern right now, if it holds below 83, then we could see that next leg lower. 
However, if it goes through, then we're talking um, the uh, will be targeting the top of the range. So this is the range that it has been trading. So our target will become 84.20. So we need to give it some time to develop as well. Uh, New Zealand yen. So this is the daily chart here. As we can see for the last few days, it hasn't um, done much. It's just been choppy. So a lot of a lot of these were choppy last week. Uh, if we go down to daily, they just kind of went back and forth. And this is why our weekly candles are not very strong. In this case as well, price has been trading in a range. So expecting a range bound move here. It looks like it wants to reject the support. So we may get something like this. So this is range bound as well, looking for price to go towards 78.40. Um, but the overall range is 78.40 and between 76.20. So neutral bias for that as well. Uh, same thing with CAD yen as well. Oh, price came into the support here at uh, 88 and then bounced up. Very small bullish candle, but the problem is going to be um, into 89. If it holds below 89.00, then we could see a continuation if it goes through we're back towards the top of the range. So in this case as well, as we can see, price has been just trading um, between these levels here, between 90.20 and between 88. So this is where I'm expecting price to stay. Uh, so looking for a bit more of a push um, towards the more towards the top of the range. Uh, but if it fails below 89, then we are back um, into the lower level. So again, we will wait for this to develop and keep an eye on it in our on our daily charts. OK, so looking at the silver here, quite a drop on Friday went from the top of the range to the bottom of the range. But looking at our weekly chart, um, it was not, um, it still is uh, within the range that it's been trading in. So overall, uh, even on the day, even though in the daily looks like a big move, it wasn't that big a move here. So right now it's stuck in a range, looking for a range bound move here as well. Actually, it looks like my charts are not updating. Okay, so let's go off of the daily. Um, so as we can see from the daily here, it is still into the support here. If the support gives out, then we will look for the next level. Uh, but we have to watch out for the support because this is where things could get a little problematic. If it fails to go through like it did the last few times, we are then back into the range. And in that case, we would be looking for price to go back. But this look, does look nice, um, strong candle to the downside. And once it breaks, though, next target will be 25.20. So bearish bias here for silver. Uh, gold here, gold is also looking bearish on the daily. Uh, so with this one here, we have a bit of an evening star setup. Uh, evening star is a bearish pattern. So we would be looking for price to essentially come back down uh, into the support level here. So in this case, the target is 18, so 1793. So 1804 and then 1793 or uh, 1790. So around that. So bias is bearish here for gold. Oil here, oil is right into support. So this is where we have to be careful. So overall on the um, on the weekly, it was bearish, but then it pulled back. So with the with the neutral candle here, we could see a turnaround. So prices into strong support. If it holds above 70.20, we're looking for a move back higher towards 74.20. So right now, um, neutral bias, uh, sorry, bearish, neutral to bearish bias. But if it doesn't go through 70.20, we are back again into the range. Copper, copper has been trading sideways here as well. Uh, we're using the daily charts just because looks like my charts are not updating. But right now, uh, just based off of the daily, we can see price has been stuck in a range. And this is where I am looking for basically price to stay range bound, uh, potentially move towards 4.18. So we've seen a rejection of the high, which means looking for price to move towards a support um, or the bottom of the range here towards 4.18. So bearish bias for 
copper, or sorry, neutral bias for copper, but looking for a bearish move towards a support level. All right, Bitcoin here. Bitcoin has been struggling. So right now, uh, current price is at 31,450. The problem is we are sitting right into the support level. Um, and once this gives way, then there's a lot of room to the downside and it could just slide right there. And it's really putting pressure into the support, which means it's likely to give way. So watch out for this slide to the downside. Uh, but again, we do need to wait for price to actually break through the support and then we can look for that continuation. But right now it looks bearish. First target is 28,850 and then 26,000. So bearish bias for Bitcoin. Um, S&P 500, as we can see, price dropped here. So for the week, this is looking bearish. Um, this is again a daily chart, but overall the entire week price moved down and closed into the support level here. So bearish bias, next target is 4,285. So bearish bias for this. And if it does continue lower, we are looking at 40 to 40. So we'll, we'll watch that on the daily, but right now uh, 40 to 85 is the target. NASDAQ here as well, this one looks bearish and targets here 14,540. And below that we have uh, 14,500. So bearish bias here for NASDAQ as well. And then Dow Jones as well, looking bearish price rejected the resistance here, the very top. And now, um, and off of that, we had a very strong drop on Friday. So looking for price to drop further here. Uh, so 34,250 is the target. So back into looking for move back into the support level. DAX here, DAX also looking bearish, but keep in mind prices into the support level that it got rejected at many, many times, but bearish nonetheless, looking for price to drop towards the, uh, the bottom of this big hole mess that this is the range it's established. So price has been trading sideways between this, um, between I should say 15,780 and 15,270. Right now, looking for a drop. First target is 15,400. Second target is 15,270. And FTSE here, FTSE also at an important support level. As we can see, price has struggled with this level multiple times. Now, it does look good, but again, we have to wait uh, for a drop through this level, and then we will look for a continuation lower 6820. But if it fails at the support, it rejects the support, then we are back into the range again. So the range has between has been between 7165 and 6960. Um, okay, and then next one here, we have Nikkei. Nikkei also looking solidly bearish, at least on the daily here. For the week as well, it has dropped. So bias is to the downside here. Uh, next target is 27,600. And then below that, we are looking at 27,400. So bearish bias here for Nikkei as well. Okay, so we have a question, um, Cadian. Cadian, I believe, looked. Let's go back to Cadian. Um, Cadian looking bearish here. It's into support, so we just need to watch out for the support, and then uh, looking for a drop back down towards eighty-six point three zero. So bearish bias. Um, although I think I should probably go take a quick peek at the dailies here. Um, so Cadian looking bearish. Um, so this one's okay. Okay, Cadian looking bearish. It's into support at 87. If it fails at 87, and this is where it could get into trouble here. Uh, right now it looks nicely bearish, but the problem will be this. So we'll have to watch out 87. If it fails to go through if it holds above then we are looking for a move back up and then we are back into this range that it's been trading in um, over the last few days here it looks like my charts aren't cooperating today uh, but overall yeah the top of the range is at 88.65 
and the bottom is at 87. So it's been trading in this range and this is where it could fail. So watch out, but right now it does look poised for the more for the downside. And then another question was on Pound Aussie. Uh, Pound Aussie is going to be tricky in the coming. First, we have to wait for the Australian monetary policy statement because that could change it. Uh, but let's take a peek here. So if Bank of Australia starts talking about um, cutting rates, then we we could see this one take off in that case. So yeah, if Australian, not cutting rates, sorry, increasing rates or starts, they start talking about, nobody's raising rates right now, but if they start talking about it, this could push it even higher. So right now this is looking bullish. It's holding above this previous support resistance level that it had struggled with um, a lot. So here it's holding above. So this looks bullish right now. Um, it is a daily chart though. So this is, let's take a look. So this is what we have. It's holding above the support resistance level. So let's get this out of the way. Uh, with this one here, it is uh, daily was neutral here. So if it holds here, then we're looking for next move higher. But overall, it does have that um, momentum to the upside. Um, so LT, another question here, do you think following the price patterns is worthwhile? Um, I, I do personally follow price patterns. Again, it's in context, within context. Um, so we have to, I don't get too carried away with it. I just follow simple patterns, but it more it's more about what's driving the market. So price, um, price will depend on, it's not the price doesn't depend on the patterns, but uh, price uh, patterns do play a role. Uh, but again, we have to keep an eye on what's going on in the market. So right now, central banks are pushing things around. What they say is having an impact on the market. Some of the numbers that are coming out are having an impact on the market like they normally do. So it's a combination of all, all of those. So not just the pattern, but should we follow the pattern? I, I follow it, but I also take a look at uh, what's going on. So it's kind of like playing golf, right? So you you have your technical swing, but then you have to see what's going on. You have to look at the air direction, uh, or the wind direction, not air, wind direction, and, and adjust for that. So it's similar here. We have our technicals, but then we adjust with the direction of the market based on what the comments come out, what news comes out. Um, so that's, that's that. But yes, I am a technical, I would call myself a technical uh, trader. So I do follow the patterns. All right. So I think that's everything. So we'll wrap it up here. You guys have a wonderful trading week and I'll be back again on Monday with our daily analysis. Bye for now.